In this tutorial, I cover V-Ray lights in 3ds Max. So if you haven't already set up your V-Ray render engine, make sure you watch my previous tutorial on render setup. Um, this is assuming you already have V-Ray render engine set up. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create a teapot here and just a plane for the base. And uh, we'll deal with materials in a later tutorial, but for now we want to introduce lights. So um, to do lights, you just go to your create tab here. And your third icon over is all of your lights. Nice thing about V-Ray is your photometric and standard um, 3ds Max lights will work in V-Ray, so that's a really nice feature. Uh, but for now, we'll just use the V-Ray lights. So the most basic V-Ray light is the V-Ray light. If we just select that and drag with our left mouse button, we create a plane here, which is the light. Um, we can then use our move, rotate, and scale. Move this thing up. Let's just move it over here and um, we'll just kind of rotate it so it's facing the object. And that's your basic light. So you can kind of move this around. And then if you select that light and then go to your Modify tab, you can then change the type of light that you're using. So right now it just by default creates a plane, but you can also create a dome light or a sphere if you're just doing a point light source or even a mesh, which we'll talk about in a second, or a disk. So it really depends on the kind of light that you want to create. I'll just maybe use a disk for this one. You can also add a target to it, which is nice if you want to really fine tune your light. Whenever you're working with lights or cameras, I recommend minimizing your viewport. And it'll just allow you to select um, either from the list over here or select uh, in the different viewports and then really be precise about how you're locating these things. So um, I really recommend minimizing your viewport whenever you work in um, 3D with either light placement or camera placement. So that looks pretty good to me. If we just go ahead and render, you can see what we get. Yep, pretty good. Um, you know, go through its different passes. You can see there's a little bit of shadow on there. So the next thing to be uh, to do is to select your light and you can actually change some values. So if I change the multiplier here, that's the the brightness of the light. So by default it's 30. If I change it to 5 and hit enter, we can see the effect that has. It's a little darker. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if I go to rendering, there's a few options here for exposure control, environments and effects. If I hit exposure control, it actually brings up environments and effects as well. You want to make sure that exposure control is turned off. If this is turned on, which it can be sometimes by default, if you, for example, add a, a V-Ray Sun, it'll actually change some things here. For this um, first tutorial, we're just going to keep exposure control off. That'll give us control over the brightness and darkness. So now if I decrease this to 0.5 and render again, you can see it's uh, even a little bit darker. Um, the reason it's still bright at any amount is because I have my global illumination on. So that's actually illuminating um, generally the scene. And then if I increase this to like 100, you'll see it'll really wash out. So that's much brighter. So it is affecting the light source, but in, uh, again, under rendering, render setup, I have global illumination turned on um, down here under environment. So if I turn these off, for example, and then I change this back to you know, 10 as a multiplier, you'll see it'll actually be much darker. So it really depends on the kind of look you're going for. If you want it to just be single light, so you can see it's really dark back here because it's not being illuminated globally. Um, and it really depends on the kind of look you're going for. So maybe we'll just keep that off for now so we, so we can see more of the light effect. If you're doing small objects like this, it's always nice to have a secondary light source. So in this case, I'll go ahead and add a new V-Ray light. And we'll just put this one over here, rotate it over, and this is called the fill light. So you have a, a fill that's behind the object, which is kind of illuminating that really dark area. And oftentimes people will turn this fill on and um, just keep it at a really low value. Like maybe we keep this at five, and then maybe uh, there, our main primary light source, maybe we increase it and bring it back to 30. Mm -hmm. So it really depends, again, on, on what you want, and you can just test different things. But you can see now I'm filling it a little bit. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, um, see this plane here? That's because you can actually see the light source by default. So if you don't want to see it, you can go over here under the light, 
and go under options and you can actually make it invisible so it'll still cast light and project light it, it just will be invisible from the camera so I'll just select both of those and make them invisible other settings you can change you can turn a light to double-sided so it's projecting light on the front and the back um, you can turn off decay naturally light decays over distance so at the light source it's brightest and then it exponentially decays um, every foot or so you get away from the light, it's going to decrease in, in intensity. If you have no decay, it'll just be a uniform intensity through that, throughout the entire light. Some people, if you're, if you're mimicking the sun, for example, and not using V-Ray sun, will turn off decay so that it's just uniform uh, light power hitting the, the scene. So you can turn on and off that based on what you're trying to do. Um, the only other thing that's really important is to change here, if you want, is the color. So if you want something... You know, let's say we want this fill light to be, you know, a very light blue, for example. We can actually change the color of that light source, and that's actually pretty deep blue, but we'll see what that looks like here. You can see it casts like kind of a blue light, and you can also see you can't see the light anymore, so that's sort of a nice um, option to change there. So that's the basics of the, the V-Ray light. If we go back to the Create tab and go under Light, you can see there's other options here. There's V-Ray IES, and this light is uh, used, um, so there's the target there, and then I can move the, the actual light. That's the actual light source. So you, one thing to make sure is your target is always on the object, not up in the sky. I see that happen quite a bit, where people actually put the target in the sky and the light source in the object. So just make sure your light source is what's in the sky. Now, if I select the IES, it's going to ask me for an IES file. And that is, corresponds to every manufacturer has an IES file or a profile for their light. So if you're using a very specific light, like in an interior rendering for a client, for example, um, you can find the manufacturer of the light and download their IES file so that it casts the light in the exact way that the, the light casts in the real world. So it's a really nice way to, to really make sure your interior rendering is matching up with the lighting specifications you have in the, in the project. Um, I'm not going to really use it for this basic one, but that's a kind of nice light option. You can also do V-Ray Sun. I'll do a separate tutorial on that. That's really good for exterior architectural renderings. If you use the V-Ray Sun, um, that's really your light source. So if you want to start adding other lights, you really have to, to do some work here to make these lights much brighter, but we'll talk about it later. So don't, don't use the V-Ray Sun. Just if you're going to combine all these other lights, just stick with the V-Ray light. Um, the one other one I want to show you is just the basic... Uh, mesh light, which I, I sort of like. So let's go ahead and go to the Create tab. Um, I'll just put a torus around this, um, and this will become our actual light source. So I'll just move this up in the sky a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and delete these two lights. I'm going to select this one, select this one, and then we'll just move this over. It doesn't really matter where that's located because it will take the geometry of the torus. But let's select that V-Ray light and then change it to a mesh type. And then under Advanced Options, sorry, actually uh, under Mesh Light here, it'll ask you to pick mesh. So I can pick mesh, and this could be an Edit Poly or an Edit Mesh. You can select that, and you can see it it actually changes the geometry into a light source. And they have the same settings. You can change the multiplier, the color, all of that stuff can be changed just as it would be with a regular light. Let's make it invisible so we don't see it. And then let's go ahead and render and see what we get. You can see this torus light around the object. So that's a really nice way if you have a complicated object and it's really hard to light with just a few lights, you can actually create a geometry that follows the, um, the object uh, geometry more closely to get a more uh, nice looking effect to it.